And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Pendulum. This is a new game from Stonemaier Games, and this is most definitely a big deal in the gaming world because Stonemaier Games has not released too many new games a year. Last year, the two games they released were Wingspan and Tapestry. Have you heard of either? Definitely, you probably have if you're in the board gaming industry at all because they were both huge releases, Wingspan, of course, being a mega hit. So, Pendulum, very exciting to hear about a new game from uh, Stegmaier Games, or Stonemaier Games. Uh, this one, a real-time game, which instantly has people going, because eh, a lot of people don't like real-time games. I tend to enjoy real-time games more than most, but a lot of people, and uh, Jamie said that, no, it's not quite what you think it is, so... Well, let's take a look. It has this really cool theme here. Dragons and clocks and griffins and some sort of time conquers all. Oh, looks like this cool um, background. Let's jump into it. Each player is going to have their own player board, and the player boards, you have kind of a basic side that everyone's going to play with, where the only difference is these tracks at the top, and also um, maybe the starting resources that you have. So this person starts with four gold, one blue, and one red, while Gamble, the briber, starts with six gold and their tracks are different. If you play with the alternate side, they are quite a bit different. Not only is your starting stuff different, your actions at the bottom are different, and you have a set of different cards in your hands. If you play with the basic side, you all have essentially the same cards. What you're trying to do is, over the course of a game, is you are attempting to get all your tracks. So you can see there's four tracks here, a red, blue, yellow, and gray, into the parchment area. If you do that and no one else does, you win. If multiple people do it on the same turn, then whoever is farther ahead will win the game. The gray one is a pretty short track. It's a legendary one. The other ones are going to move much faster over the course of the game. Whenever you take an action like this action here shows you move the red forward one. And so this whole game is about taking actions and spending resources to move these discs along this track. You're going to be taking actions using timers, but you also have cards from your hand that you can play. Like, for example, I can play this card anytime I want to move the blue forward one. I can play this card to get a resource of my choice. I can pay this card and seven money to get another worker, because I only have two workers to start with. I can do all this, but if I want all my cards back in my hand, I need to pay five blue. This board is where all the action is going to take place. You have three timers, a three-minute timer, a 45-second timer, and a two-minute timer. Players will start with their pieces on the boards in these different spots. And there's a couple rules whenever you're placing people. First of all, you can only ever place your workers in the rows where the timers are not. So that's the rule. Secondly, down here you can place as many people as you want. In the other rows, your little worker can only go there if no one else is there. Your grande worker can go pretty much anywhere they want. When the game starts, you flip the timers over. And the purple one removes one of these three purple tokens from the board. You'll flip them over, and then the game begins. And it's a real-time game. And what this means is if your worker is in a spot where there's a timer, you can take actions. You can only take actions where the timers are. You can only place workers where the timers are not. So while this worker's here, I can say I'm going to move this down here and take this action. This one cost me four military resources, and I can conquer a province. If I was here, I could take a resource of my choice. If I was here, I can take a vote. If I'm here, I can activate my yellow province up here. Pay two gold to activate my red province. Pay two gold to move two on the yellow track. Pay two gold to move one on the red track and get two votes. And then over here, pay two gold to move on to activate my brown province. Pay two gold to move on the yellow blue track and get a vote. And pay two gold to activate the blue province. So your character is locked until the timer moves, but this timer has run out, so anybody can flip it over. And now I can put a person, I can move them to another spot in here, or maybe I move them up here so that when this one flips over, I can immediately take that action. Or over here. You have ways that you can work it, and as I showed you, you have a card that you can get more workers, and you, will, you can at most ever have 
uh, three workers in play, but you have the opportunity, or four workers in play, but you have the opportunity to upgrade two of them to grandes. One of the actions I said is you can conquer a province. When you conquer a province, you can take one of these provinces at the top one. You're then going to take this province and you're going to tuck it under your board um, on any side you want. So let's say I decide I'm going to tuck it here. From now on, whenever I take an action that does the red province, I'm going to get four red resources and two blue resources. Or maybe I can put it under the blue one, and here I just get eight blue resources. Or if I put it underneath the yellow one, I get two gold and a blue resource. Or I could tuck it over underneath the brown one, here where I move one on the red track and one on the blue track. And the cool thing about these are, is they stack. So you can have multiples, although you're only ever gonna, in between rounds, when the round is over, you're only going to be able to keep two in each of the slots. But during the round, you can make it go as high as you want. And then every time you activate it, you get everything there. So if I activate this right now, I'm moving three on the red track and one on the blue track. You also are limited to a certain number of resources. You only have 10 of each resource, except for votes. There are tons of votes you can have. And there are 10 votes in case you go over 10 votes, because votes are going to determine who goes first in the next round. The purple timer is bouncing back and forth. When the purple timer moves the last of these tokens off, when it bounces back the third time, that's going to trigger the end of the game. Everybody can finish up all the actions that you have, wherever the timers might be, and then there is a council phase. In the council phase, players are going to be counting their votes to determine turn order which is over here. Determining turn order is going to give you bonuses here. And one of those bonuses is going to be picking from these bonus cards here. There's always the ability to turn one of your workers into a grande worker, but you can also just take a random choose one, move on any path, or you can take new cards to your hand that you can play. As long as you can play, pay the resource to get them back into your hand, you can play these cards multiple times. I should also mention that over here is the legendary area. One person can go here once per round. Well, lots of people can go there, but only one person can go here. This is how you move your gray piece. So to go here, for example, in this round, I would need to have six red resources, two blue resources, and three votes. If I do so, I'm going to place my token here. And if I'm the first person to go there, I'll get a token to show that I'm, I've completed my legendary accomplishment to move my gray piece. Everybody else who goes there will just get these resources on the bottom and these are going to change from round to round in the different requirements all the votes that you've collected uh, each round are discarded you don't get to, get to keep them from round to round but like I said they are going to determine turn order and how you pick those cards and extra benefits and then you'll start the next round after a certain number of rounds the game's over or if someone wins by getting all their stuff into the parchment area Here's where I'm going to get a little unhappy with the game. I really don't like the components. I think this board is really bland and boring. I don't mind the art on the different characters. I think it's actually kind of cool. And these boards are really nice and thick. And I like how there's a slight difference between the art on the two different sides. So I like that the best, but that's about it. Now, there's stunning artwork promised in this game. And in fact, if you look carefully at these cards, there's really good artwork on them. But the fact of the matter is when you play the game, you never notice that artwork. Timers. Alrighty, so I timed the timers because I was curious. And in our particular game, the green and the black ones were on, but the purple one was 20 seconds long. So it's three minutes and 20 seconds, and that does make a difference. Not to mention both the black and the purple timer occasionally. In fact, I think right here, if you look, you can see that the purple one is not coming out. And I had, we have to tap it because it would stop occasionally. And in a game like this, that's, that's kind of a bad thing. These are nice looking timers, but in a game where timers matter that much, it's important. Then the actual components here. In a day where we're getting better and cooler with components, these all these components felt cheap and plastic and comparatively. I especially did not like the votes because the votes you have to stack on top of each other on your board and they kept falling over for me. And then all the other cards of the game, you know, they're functional and everything, but they're just really bland and boring looking. So unfortunately, this just doesn't look like a typical Stonemeyer game. It looks bad.
Well, first of all, we'll say the theme doesn't exist at all. So that's problematic. Okay, that, We're starting with already some knocks against the game. I'm not a big fan about the game's components, and the theme is not here at all. There's some cool art pictures on this, but I have no idea what's going on in this game. Neither do I care. Um, I'm more interested in the game mechanism. So let's just, the, the theme, if you're here for the theme or the components, this is not a great place to start, which again is unfortunate be, because Wingspan, for example, the one game from last year, great components components amazing theme but let's talk about this so let's talk about the elephant in the room which is the real time aspect to this in the rule book uh, the rules writer says something to the effect of don't worry you know don't be so crazy take some time to think if you do that you'll have an edge up on people who move fast I apologize but that's flat out untrue if someone's really fast thinker they're going to do better at this game hands down yes you are not always moving in this game but you are definitely moving really fast and someone who's faster moving than other people will be able to fly their fingers across the board faster than other people that is fact secondly the game says don't worry about making mistakes the rule book says because if you make mistakes you know everyone's gonna make mistakes then you just want to make fewer mistakes in your opponents Again, I played against people who made no mistakes. So therefore, if I made a mistake, I should worry about it. Anyhow, the game's a real-time competitive game, and that comes with its own innate set of problems. To wit, did you cheat? I don't know. I wasn't watching you. Now, I'm not saying people cheat in this game deliberately. Pfft, I don't play against people like that. But it's really easy in this game to make a mistake. In a real game, if I say, oh, I'm paying three yellow cubes to do this, I'm going to say, wait a minute, uh, that's actually, you, you don't have the, the prerequisite for that. Oh, yeah, you're right, sorry. None of that exists in this kind of game. I can move things around and do this, and, oh, you, you weren't supposed to move that guy. There was a, a timer there. Oh, I didn't notice. It, it's just not possible. Now, that doesn't bother me too much, but it is a thing, and that does make Pendulum almost the ultimate solitaire game because when it's over if you say you beat me i just have to accept that i don't know now there is interaction between the players because you'll go to spots that i want to go to um, and you also will accomplish your legendary goal and there's a fight to do that first and in fact this game has a, a possibility that someone could not finish their legendary goal by the end of the game other players could stop them from doing it and i found that to be slightly uncool if you did something like that but uh, probably not everyone will do that now it sounds like i'm just heaping negative and stiff on the game let me reverse some of that here by saying i really liked a lot of it the part where you conquer provinces and add those actions making those actions better is awesome the alternate side for the characters is fantastic. They really feel different. They each have different sets of cards. They have a different flow. One of them is really good at getting lots of provinces. One of them is good at manipulating resources and other resources. And they all have this very strong different feel to them. I would also be remiss in saying there is a play to play this where it's not timed. You just flip all the timers, take those actions, and flip just the black timer, etc., etc. And there's also a full bore Automa, uh, Automa in this solo play, which I have not tried out, but Mike Delisio has, and so he can tell you more about that in his review. Um, so I like the idea of pumping up my actions. I like the idea of changing this resource into this resource into that. There's something satisfying about that, moving the paths down. But even there, there's a few problems. The, the, the province cards, there are some that are clearly better than others. They're all, mostly because they're rarer than others. And so if one of those pops up and I happen to be getting a province card at that point in time, that's, that's just pretty awesome. But it's still fun. It's still fun to move the pieces around. The timer aspect is fun. It's not going to be fun for everyone. There's going to be some people who hate this game. If you don't like real-time games, you won't like Pendulum. I've seen this narrative on the internet that this is not like other real-time games. Yes, it is! I like real-time games, but that's exactly what this is. It's about timers and moving things fast. Um, Space Dealer, which is a game that was with timers, has done this four or five years ago. It's the exact same thing. It's not like Pendulum's breaking new ground here. There's just some differences in how the timers are used. If you, if you hated Space Dealer, you're going to hate Pendulum. I like Space Dealer, so I like Pendulum. 
The problem is a lot of these other factors, including the, the production values, the lack of theme, bring it down. But ultimately, this is what keeps me from saying Dice Tower approved on this. I like it. It's fine. I'll play it. But I feel like I finished it. I've played it a few times. I'm pretty good at it at this point in time. I'm not saying I'm as good as you. I'm sure you would crush me. And I've been beaten by people. But I feel like I can sit there and go, da 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 and I don't feel like if I play that same character, I could switch characters, of course. I don't play, I would play them that much differently. I would kind of do the same things each game. And it doesn't feel like there's this huge branching tree. Again, jumping to Tapestry and Wingspan from last year, both of those I could play over and over and over and over and over again and play differently every time because of different combinations. Here, I feel like I've completed my fill of Pendulum. It was entertaining, it was interesting, but now I'm done. And unfortunately, that, coupled with the components, coupled with the fact that a lot of people don't like real-time games, I think are going to keep this from being a game for everybody. It may be fantastic for you. And if so, check it out first. Because still, this real-time com competitive game thing seems to not be an incredibly popular genre. It just isn't. Uh, there are some people who love it, but those people tend to beat the people who don't love it. Um, and so if you don't like it, I probably will beat you at it. But there's also people who will destroy me, and I just sit there and watch in awe of how fast they can think in their mind. To be fair, this one does bring that down a little bit because there is a 45-second timer is the shortest timer. If I move pieces around and do actions in only 30 seconds, I'll have 15-second downtimes between that timer. And sometimes my pieces are locked up into three-minute and two-minute timers, and I'll have even longer to think. So there are those pauses where I'm like, okay, what am I going to do next? But you are never stopping thinking. You are continually moving. The game ends fairly quickly because it just keeps moving and moving and moving. And at the end of the day, I moved a bunch of discs down a path using different ways to get there. Do you like that? Check it out. Otherwise, this may be a pass for many people. It's going to be divisive, I think, either way. And that is Pendulum. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you all next time. Our judgment, an interesting game.